hope you can all see that. Yay, cool. Um, so I'm Kay. Uh, I'm really, really uh, pleased to be here. Um, and I'm going to speak to you about enabling a metaverse for people and planet. Um, what does that mean? Well, for today, I'm going to talk to you all about how we use 3D design to protect our culture and the environment in the digital age. And I'm really, really pleased to be here. So let's take it away. So a tiny bit about me, and I'm going to talk to you then about some case studies that we've been working on um, and leave you with some cool thoughts uh, at the end about what we, more we can do to use 3D um, to, to make a better world. So a little bit about me. Um, I am half Singaporean and half English, and I was born in Brunei, and I lived there for the first 10 years of my life. And I was always playing with Play-Doh and making stuff out of 3D and just kind of like, wow, can I make like an apple or a chicken or something like that? You know, just and it was always part of me. Um, and then that has morphed into my really deep love for ceramics. And I was really, really pleased to then um, uh, get a job at the, as head of arts at the British Council in Singapore. And that was all about bringing together British artists to Singapore to collaborate. Later, um, I also doubled in back to my law uh, career and I became a technology lawyer. Um, and all my life I have done volunteering. And so I've just kind of been really wanting to bring together my knowledge in art and technology for good. So let's uh, dive in. All of art and tech for good means for me is mesh minds. And I want to bring together the best brains in the world to work on projects um, from, uh, that bring together the art and technology worlds and to tell stories that create change. We have a not-for-profit foundation which is focused on upskilling creators in the digital age. And I'm really pleased that we have been able to partner with the United Nations Environment Program, um, UNESCO, and we're part of the Apple Consultants Network, as well as this MetaSpark Partner Network, and we're official lens creators at Snapchat. So all of this is kind of like bringing together these amazing XR worlds with the real world to get people to act and, and, and change their behaviors for a better world. So how can we protect our culture and environment in the digital age? That is what drives uh, Mesh Minds. And we've thought about empowering creators to use frontier technologies to tell visual interactive stories that create change. And why do we do this? We're thinking through like um, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. It's all coming together as extended reality. OK, and this is we feel, you know, we're, we're totally on board with um, having uh, the, 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 these as entry points to the metaverse. We're finding these research studies. 80 percent of students are saying that they're more likely to attend an AR based class. 70% of students claim that they're improving their learning. Virtual reality is four times faster. People are learning things and they're more focused. It's really, really incredible what is happening. And all of these research studies are showing that the 3D worlds that, we are, that we're able to create can really draw people in and change the way that we are communicating um, at mass education levels. Our impact has been over the last five years that we've managed to reach 25 million people through our AR experiences. We've worked with six UN Goodwill ambassadors across the Asia Pacific region to really you know, change the way that we are talking about climate change and things that, um, that, that require people to get behind for, for people and planet topics. Um, we have been able to create 200 interactive and immersive experiences and I feel like we're only just beginning. We've only worked with 150 artists and we really want to work with some more. So diving in, how can we protect our culture? I'd love to speak to you about Art Reimagined Taiwan. This was an amazing project where Meta asked us to work with traditional artists and bring their art forms to life in 3D. This is Abao. Abao is a Taiwanese artist she um, makes amazing music out of her uh, traditional tribal Pyrenees language. And here you see her in her beautiful headdress. She, we, we created it uh, with um, Atitan Art Studio and Speed 3D in Taiwan. And they were able to create movement with that um, amazing 3D uh, animation and, um, and then able to kind of like create these, um, this character where she could actually dance with her. And then the far right picture that you see there, that's all about in, inside uh, Taiwan when we actually showcased the, um, the, the work. People were dancing in, with a giant abao, learning about Taiwanese uh, traditional wedding culture. 
It was absolutely fantastic. And I'm so pleased to share with you Art Reimagined Taiwan, unfortunately due to the pand pandemic, only attracted 700 physical visitors, but through the augmented reality effects, these were seen by more than 100,000 people around the world. And these effects, they persist online. So they're always now going to be there for many people to really dive into um, parts of Taiwanese culture that they may not otherwise have known about. This is another amazing one. We're able to collaborate with New Zealand artists. Really incredible. Um, you should check it out at Instagram Next or, uh, Oz. Um, that we had uh, the, the Maori gods story and we're able to create five of these different gods and through augmented reality where you can actually put these items into, um, in, into uh, uh, the, the real world and also uh, interact with them and learn about their stories. Um, it's been absolutely incredible to watch people interact with them all over the world um, from their living rooms wherever they are and really kind of dive into these um, incredible stories. Um, here you see the, the earthquake god, uh, Ruamoko, and when he is inside that, um, that experience, he's there inside your living room. It really brings that culture to you, very, very close to you. I'm also pleased to chair that these types of effects have an engagement rate of, of 12%. I mean, it's, it's significantly higher than the average engagement rate for an Instagram post, um, which is around 1%. Um, we find that, uh, you know, the, the, the engagement really kind of, it, it's, in, it's, it, it's because people are able to be kind of drawn into this world um, and uh, really kind of imagine um, themselves in that world as well. And it brings that, the, the ability to kind of, um, uh, kind of interact with it more and feel it that it's closer to you. This is a fantastic. Um, uh, uh, so, sorry, this is this is a fantastic uh, um, uh, project that we did uh, with the UN Environment Programme, and we challenged everyone to think about for 100 days to beat plastic pollution. How can we bring this this message to life? We needed to um, uh, we we needed to uh, you know bring the message of beat plastic pollution to the Southeast Asian region. And we knew that it takes 66 days on average to, um, to form a new habit. Um, so we decided that we needed to create these visual, uh, the, 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 these visual depictions of what we needed to avoid, for example. So um, in, in Say No to Single Use Plastic, we decided that we needed to um, you know, visualize these, the, these polluting plastics and, um, and, and and uh, you know, have have the the the, uh, the uh, renewable al alternatives as kind of like um, you know the the juxtaposition of, of of you know the NBP plastic pollution message, and so we worked with this amazing uh, 3D artist called Ses Grané and in Tokyo, and he thought you know how can we kind of make these amazing um, characters come to life, but not make them too cute so that you don't want to kind of like you know. Make, make them too kind of like likable, you know, so look, let's have the polluting plastics, um, you know, have these kind of features around them and th that made them kind of, you know, gnarly and, and kind of like you know, the kind of evil eyes that he kind of um, very cleverly put on them. And then with the reusables as well, it was kind of like, we do want to make them very kind of, um, you know, likable and, and we want to kind of have people wanting to collect them. So when we put the, um, the campaign together, I think the, the way that he created these three characters was really, really clever because when we were then able to incorporate them into um, Say No to Single Use, for example, when you see that, um, that 3D object on screen, you're just kind of like, no, no, I, I don't want that. Um, I don't want that, uh, that item, but, you know, the, the polluting plastic. But yes, yes, I do want the, uh, the, the re renewable. And so kind of like making, bringing together the gesture-based um, gaming with uh, like kind of like the con connecting the, the gesture that you, that you want people to say no to in real life with something that you're seeing in augmented reality on their phone screen is, is incredibly powerful. And then being able to kind of gamify that and 
um, bring that to a challenge-based situation where people are like, okay, cool, you know, how, how many have you got? And, and bringing them into that conversation in a, in a playful way, I think is incredibly um, um, powerful. And through the use of 3D objects, we're able to, to make that more real for them. The next one was clean our oceans and using, you know, beautiful corals, for example, and, and again, pop, popping those 3D elements into the um, scene. That may, you know, and then you go around with your net and you're trying to capture it all. And, and you're kind of like, you know, I, I almost I feel like I'm there. I, I'm, I'm kind of like really, you know, because it, the, the whole world surrounds you. And so it's, it's terribly immersive. And so I think that the power of 3D environments is, is absolutely incredible to really kind of take you there. And, you know, you can imagine this kind of technology then being applied to future wearables and stuff. And, and then your mind can explode in terms of how much you can transport people away. Um, the next one you see is uh, drowning in plastic. And again, we really had fun with placing those 3D objects in augmented reality and, and cascading them all over. Um, and then kind of getting people to no, know, I, I, I don't want that future. I, I, I don't want that as, as my future. Um, and then the, the last one was the uh, meet the reusables. Um, that was the uh, world effect where you could spawn that, that, um, that bag, for example, um, or any of the other uh, reusable objects and be like, yeah, cool, I want this one. Um, and, and make again, make your pledge, um, uh, you know, like, uh, and, and she's doing there with her, her plastic bag. So kind of really enabling you to be um, playful, basically. Um, so yeah, and then by gamifying that that message, um, we're obviously able to um, to achieve that ripple effect of people tagging their friends and to challenge them, as I was saying. And you know, I'm, I'm really really pleased to share that you know 1.2 million people played just in that hundred days, and you know, just kind of to be able to gamify um, the UN's message and to really kind of get people behind it in in Southeast Asia was was really really magical. And I think that we're going to do now more to make it into an, uh, an educational experience so that these these characters don't gather digital dust, right? You know, that's the best thing about all of these 3D characters that we're all creating in these worlds is that you know they they can persist, and 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 that's what's really beautiful about it. And and you can reuse them and, and remix them. Um, and, and, and I think that's where the magic's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, moving on to uh, World Environment Day, um, we had uh, uh, an amazing opportunity as well to create these three uh, environments where inside um, you know, your, your phone, again, you are able to transport yourself away to the mountains of India, uh, the coral reefs of the Philippines and the mangroves of Thailand. Um, and then through that experience, you're able to see, sadly, the whole degradation of that environment. Um, and then um, uh, uh, and, and then uh, and then, um, you know, witness through uh, the, the process of kind of like the autoplay and, and learning that like, oh, wow, this is how it should look and this is how it could be restored. So it's, it's about asking kind of people to um, join generation restoration. So um, I'm really pleased to also share, therefore, that, um, in, that we reached over uh, 820,000 people across 41 different countries. Um, so really, really incredible. Um, and uh, it's, uh, oops, sorry. And, uh, and, and yeah, and, and just kind of like, you know, in terms of, again, that engagement with, you know, 8% of all of those people sharing something and, and making that pledge and, and just that World Environment Day kind of being brought to life by those Goodwill ambassadors who have a really kind of um, amazing way of showing people their own environment and their country that they're trying to protect. Um, so what's up next for us? Goodness. Um, so really, really exciting things ahead. We are um, collaborating with uh, City Sprouts and we are making uh, a virtual urban farm. And City Sprouts is a uh, farm that's in Singapore. And we've built these uh, amazing environments out of Unreal Engine. And uh, it allows uh, people to use their Ready Player Me avatar um, to go inside and see themselves doing certain things in the farm and then learning about um, sustainable agriculture and all the different types of cool like hydroponics and aquaponics and all these kind of amazing uh, sustainable agriculture and technology uh, solutions for the future of food. Um, and so the City Sprouts Farm said to us, you know, the, the problem was that we, we don't have any kind of like teenagers coming down the farm. And, you know, so they kind of get here and they're like, oh, it's rubbish. It's like, you know, where's my where's my smartphone? And, you know, it's like I, I'm not I can't be bothered with this farming. And and, and you know, I think through this kind of uh, cool interactive uh, thing where you can kind of 
put your put your avatar in this in the center of um, where you are a digital twin of it and then kind of like also have a little picture at the end of it that you can kind of share with your friends and be like actually it was actually quite cool actually and you know and maybe kind of share that message onwards um so yeah so i think it's going to be really fun to make those kind of 3d cool environments and kind of uh, see what the kids kind of make out of it um up next um I've also got a, a Roblox game coming up because I've got two little kids and um, yeah, they just, you know, they came to me the other day going like, oh, telling me all about, uh, you know, bees and where honey comes from and how pollination takes place. And I'm like, what? Where did you uh, find out about that? And uh, he was just like, oh, I've just been playing Bee Simulator. And so you can actually go into Roblox and you can you be the bee and fly around and understand how to pollinate all the flowers. Or you can be the beekeeper and you can kind of go around and be like, oh, you know, and, you know, looking after the bees and making honey. And it's kind of like just by virtual role playing and going through these 3D worlds in this little game that you can communicate so much. Um, and I think it's going to be an incredible way where we break down barriers and, and go away from kind of like so much words and static and, and 2D images and that kind of stuff. Like we now have the power to create worlds in 3D that are, are genuinely really um, educational and entertaining at the same time and in perfect balance. Um, so, yeah, so we've, we've created uh, or we're, we're creating um, an urban farming tycoon, because we would really love, um, uh, in, in Singapore, we have a commitment to um, having 30% of our food uh, produced in Singapore um, by 2030. And I think it's, it's, it's something that we really want to get behind. And that means that we have to educate people about hydroponics, aquaponics, all of these you know, uh, vertical farms that we have to put on the side of our uh, HDB blocks in Singapore. Um, and I think it's going to be really incredible to bring to life the workshops that um, City Sprouts Farms and, and you know, other uh, Edible Garden City Farm, you know, all of these people who are running real life workshops, taking all of that information and making it visual and, and experiential in a 3D world. And I think it's going to be really, really cool. Um, this is another one uh, that's really that's coming up soon. Um, and so I'm really, really pleased to tell you about this one. Um, we're opening it on uh, the, the 17th um, and uh, of, of November on Thursday. And uh, we've worked with Meta again um, for the third time for Art Reimagined. And this time we're bringing it to home territory, which is going to be amazing. Um, and so spotlighting uh, three traditional artists in Singapore, we have here on the left, Kumari Nahapan, and she's worked with these incredible uh, AR creators called Cyril Co um, to bring her tangoing chili paddies life. And she is an amazing Indian sculptress. And um, she uh, creates these enormous uh, metal uh, sculptures of the kind of, spices and fruits um, of the Southeast Asian region and particularly in Singapore. And so we brought all of her, uh, art, her static sculptures to life. Um, and, and so we're going to be able to kind of access those and put them anywhere you are. And I'd love to see um, pictures from around the world of the tangoing chilies wherever you are in the world. It'd be awesome. Um, on the right here, we have um, uh, Longkok, which is, I think, uh, the world's first uh, Malay uh, folk uh, and dance uh, world effect where you're going to learn about uh, the gin that gets into a pile of clothes. And that's why your mum's always telling you to put away your clothes. Um, so yeah, you're gonna learn about, um, uh, in, you're gonna learn some Malay language, um, you know, and, and learn about the, uh, the, the special gin spirit of um, folklore. And that's been done by Nohaizad Adam and uh, dude.sg. Um, and we've got another one, uh, but that's kind of a, a, a 2D one. So I, I didn't want to uh, skip it, but it's uh, also incredible. We've been working with a cultural medallion, a painter who's 82 years old, and we bought his painting. We transformed it um, through a world effect where you can walk through the painting and see his transformation from an, an, a, a, a representational painter to an abstract painter through the course of his uh, career. So that's gonna be really cool. Um, so please, uh, you know, it's, it's already live on Instagram. So it's coming up, Art Reimagined SG. The effects will be live uh, later on, on uh, Thursday. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be down at Hatch Art Product in Singapore. So if anyone's there, that'd be really cool to see you. Um, but yeah, I just kind of want to leave you with a little bit of a kind of, oh, you know, Gravity sketch, <laughs> what's next? Um, I genuinely would love to know from everyone, like um, what, if, when, you, when you see the kind of projects that we've been working on, 
what could you kind of like think about you know taking the the stories and and the uh, the content and stuff that we've been working on and recreating it in gravity sketch and and kind of doing incredible things and because I, I i don't when when i watch the video of gravity sketch and everything that they have cre done and created to date it's just been so incredible and i think that that, that we are we all have such an amazing opportunity now to use our 3d skills to create um worlds characters stories that can genuinely create change inside a potential future metaverse um that can can genuinely take us forward and balance out all the kind of bad stuff that we know that also will be on the uh, metaverse and the future of the internet you know i think um i'm going to leave you with the thought in in terms of you know there will always be kind of bad stuff and scary stuff on the internet. And I think lots of people are kind of scared about, you know, this 3D world that we're about to kind of enter into in this new embodied internet. Um, but I think at the same time, we have to remember um, that we can just lift up the good. And so therefore, if we can use some of our skills to try to lift up the good stuff that's on the internet and our future metaverse, I think that that's gonna be, um, you know, take humanity forward. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Kay. Um, I mean, thank you for the presentation, but thank you for the work that you're doing. It's uh, it's really inspiring, and there's a lot of comments in the in the chat about this. Um, you know, we we have been having a lot of conversations this week um, about 3D workflows and about you know expressing yourself and communication and so on. Um, and this is kind of like a bit of a a different type of topic, um, which is it's really about using those skills and using those technologies for creating a change in people's perception, in people's minds, in people's behavior, which is, yeah, it's really, I mean, thank you for it. Um, something that I was thinking when, when I was, you know, listening to you and watching, watching all the different projects is that you're using 3D mediums and 3D technologies and so on but you're still kind of like trying to like figuring out how to bring it to the masses, right? Which is something really important. That's still, there's still a bit of a disconnect between 3D and the metaverse and VR and, you know, all these things that seem to be a bit more complex, which, you know, once you're in them, they don't, they're not that complex, but you're figuring out how to bring it to the hands of people, right? So that it can actually have an impact. And I think that's also like, that's really important because Sometimes we get so fi fixated in the technology that we stop thinking about how do we get more people to access it. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's why we're so thankful for being able to work with an, an organization like the UN um, and kind of, you know, they can bring it to the masses in some way, right? But at the same time, um, the great thing is that the re you know, all of these technologies have been around for a very, very long time. Let's not forget that. And the only reason why they're kind of like massively being talked about now is because of advances in, uh, you know, technology and, and software and, and telecommunications and all of those things. So, you know, and, and when we talk about kind of, you know, some people are afraid of, for example, 5G. But, you know, in with all of these advancements of technology, we're able to just experience some, you know, something through your smartphone just so easily without it melting to the ground you know, with all the battery and all that kind of stuff. So it's an amazing opportunity. Now we are able to bring 3D objects into just even this and then potential future for wearables and all that kind of stuff it, it it enables us to kind of feel closer to objects um that we would otherwise might not otherwise be able to have and hold um you know i think the applications for example for um you know in terms of like things like the smithsonian uh, museum where they have old artifacts and that kind of stuff and you know, i can never go there I, I i'd love to go there but perhaps i can't go there now i'm able to kind of you know visualize it at least and be like oh wow that's what it looks like from this angle and that's what it looks like from that angle so i think the opportunities that we have to kind of bring objects worlds closer to students learners you know just through using this technology i think is is really amazing and i think people who are able to create in virtual reality, create these beautiful digital twins or imaginary twins or inspired by the real world. You know, anything is possible. That's, that's the most incredible thing because you don't have to think about physics inside the virtual world, right? You can make, why, why anchor your building to the floor? Just make it on a cloud. You know, I, you know so you, I think, you know, it's, it's how 
humans are going to be able to express so much of their creativity through this, the, the creation of these virtual 3D objects. And I think that's going to be really, really powerful. Um, and I'm just so excited for the future, in, in, in the future of computing, in the future of what people are going to be able to bring to themselves just through the little technology that we hold in our pocket or beyond that in future wearables and that kind of stuff, you know? So. Yeah, it's um, definitely something that not, like, you know, the day-to-day -day people are not necessarily thinking about, but, yeah, like, having these things in our phones, it's, it's you know, like, something that before it wasn't possible, even though we still had phones, and they look exactly the same, <laughs> um, but the power that they have right now, and, like, you know, VR and all these different technologies that are, are appearing that are enabling us to kind of like just have these the very different experiences wherever we are in the world, connecting us together, having someone from China with someone from Mexico and just like being able to collaborate and talk to each other and so on. One thing that I would like, I want to ask you is like, is through all of these efforts, through all of these exercises, obviously you're, you're working and collaborating with a lot of artists and there's a lot of questions around this and we'll jump into that now. Um, have you found that there's still a scarcity for 3D creators, you know, because it's something that it's kind of like a bit technical or sometimes, you know, a lot of people have been, because we have been kind of like behind 2D screens for a really long time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of skills around 2D, but not enough around 3D. And so do we need to be actually pushing this and like helping people get into that? Oh, I, th I think a thousand percent, right? A thousand percent. I think, um, you know, the uh, the the fact that, sadly, the fact that, uh, you know, um, art has obviously, you know, in some countries like Singapore, being kind of quite sidelined off the curriculum in in its entirety, has meant that even you know people find it difficult even to kind of like pick up things like digital drawing. So beyond that, you know, the 3D is a different realm. It is, a, it's a definite, you know, you, you've got to have an eye for it. You've got to understand how to create something. You know, if you, for example, it, I'm not a 3D designer, right? So if, if I go into virtual reality, I kind of, you know, my first instinct is to kind of just do something like a, a, a smiley face. But that's because I'm looking at the face. And when, you know, when I speak to some of our VR artists, they're like, yes, because, you know, you can, you need to think about, you know, what does it look like from every angle? And you need to have that kind of vision and you need to be taught, you know, that is how to draw the back of the person's head as well. So that when it rotates, oh, it, it's all there. You know, so it is a big leap. I don't think it's an impossible, but, impossible one, but it, it pains me that, you know, art is not and creativity. And, you know, even like where I started in terms of like making things out of clay or Play-Doh and that kind of stuff, you need to push that forward more. Right. Because now those those skills of being able to be like, aha, I've made something that looks quite like an apple, actually, <laughs> you, know, or something like that. you know, a digital twin of something in Play-Doh, you know, and then be able to create that or sculpt that in virtual reality and, like, and then be able to then manipulate that into a tiny object, a giant object, you know, and bolt things on and make it super creative. I think, you know, that that is going to really bring out, it really brings out people's kind of um, innovation and, and thinking and, and imagination, right? Again, what I was talking about before in terms of like, you know, that, that, that apple that, you know, well, maybe it's a kind of gnarly apple. Maybe you kind of make it a gnarly apple into a, like a character and give him some legs and some, you know, <laughs> little horns. You know, it's like you can, with, with, with the, be, being able to create these digital objects, um, I think it is such a great skill and it, it's going to allow us to express our human creativity even more. Do you see what I mean? It's like, cause I, I, you know, with, with just kind of clay, you can kind of get there, but it's gonna take you ages and you know, it's like, but with, if people can master these digital tools and then we're able to kind of, I'm able to share that object with you. And then I, hey, why don't you add, add to my little gnarly uh, apple, you know? And, and then we riff off each other together and it's, it's it allows us to now take the web two, um, you know, tech of, of communication and kind of like then passing these cool objects to each other and almost like kind of being able to play when we were kids and be like, hey, do you want to add something to my Play-Doh monster? You know, and, and I think that that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's really cool. And being able to kind of collaborate in that way in the digital world and, and you know, in, in 3D is, is so incredibly powerful for human beings because we, we, we love to do it anyway in real life. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Like if we, the fact that things are starting to become more 3D, more real in a way, more kind of like interactive is enabling us to get them to have a much more strong impact in how we think about things. So I think we're in a, we're in a really amazing, still there's a lot of work to do, but in a really amazing time where we can use these technologies and we can use 3D to actually be able to create change. And this is what you're trying to do, right? Um, with all the different projects that you've shown us is because now it's becoming so real in a way or so natural, then it has a much more strong impact in how we kind of like behave around it or like how it changes our minds. Like example that you were giving about this bees uh, game, um, you know, like just getting children to actually understand how bees behave and like how they make all of this and, and, and through that respecting them and like helping them to survive and like so on. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities for science, art, and kind of like all these different um, associations and like NGOs and so on to be working together so that these experiences, even though they seem to be kind of like fun and gamey and so on, can create an actual change in society. That's absolutely right. Because, you know, you know Walmart has already entered uh, Roblox and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of if, if, you know, all the big retailers are going in there, you know, why not? Let's build some, right, you know, really cool educational stuff that's also really fun um, that, you know, has some kind of maybe a little bit serious or complex topics about, you know, people and planet sometimes. But trying to kind of get young people to kind of take on the message that we are facing, you know, really, you know, potential climate catastrophe if, if to cut catastrophe if, if, if you, you know, believe in what the UN and, and everyone is saying. But um, we need to make sure that our children and, and our, our young people are, are not kind of becoming kind of so anxious about it that they become apathetic. And I think it's really important that we are able to combine um, education, nil material with entertainment so that it becomes more powerful when, uh, when someone wants, that their mind is more open when they're kind of more relaxed. So, you know, when we've created a virtual diving experience, for example, when we, we created Oceans We Make with Warrior 9 VR, and it was like, let's drop people in this um, 3D ocean, and, but then let's just let, get them to enjoy the diving experience first. And then after that, we hit them with the plastic pollution message by slowly kind of like, oh, there's a little piece of plastic. Oh, just, just, just reach out for it. And, oh, ding. and then you, oh, it's, it's faster. And, oh, you're going faster. And it's like, oh, we're going through. And, just like, and then suddenly you realize that you're completely engulfed and you can never, ever finish this game. <laughs> so mm -hmm. like, and you're pulled out. And the last thing that you see is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Because of the 3D world that you're able to create, you're able to look at it from the first person perspective. And seeing that, the just it went on and on and you're like goodness and it, it you know when I did that virtual reality experience that's that was when like I genuinely changed my behavior in in three minutes they communicated to me I've got to stop you know I've got a single-use plastic no this is you know it was so so powerful right but so being able to combine these worlds right where it's not just all about kind of beat saber and crazy stuff um, <laughs> but being able to kind of say you know I've got a bit of a message for you it's a bit of a serious one but I'm going to have you like a really cool virtual diving experience as well, right? And so, you know, being able to perhaps combine that is the way forward. And I think that sometimes some of the climate stuff that you see is so terrifying, I'm not quite sure how to process it. And I worry about what children or young people are thinking about that when they, when they see that stuff. So I want to be able to kind of use 3D worlds, 3D environments, you know, and, and characters and that kind of stuff to be able to kind of slightly lighten the message and be like, and try to still get them on board that, you know, still do go and buy one of these reusable bottles. Mm -hmm. Try, try to avoid single use wherever you can. You know, we do have hope. Let's, you know, have hope for humanity and we can get through this. Right. Um, and just, you know, back balancing out at the same time, I'm all for, you know, having loads of amazing, just pure entertainment stuff, amazing, incredible, you know, retail, you know, some of the, you know, the trainers that people have, you know, the sneakers that people have been designing on gravity skates, it's just mind blowing, right? The, the motorbikes, the, the vehicles, the, just incredible stuff, right? So, but I, my stuff is just, I want to do protection of culture and environment in the digital age through, you know, making these incredible 3D worlds. 
So yeah, it's creating yeah. awareness. Um, yeah. I mean, some of these other projects that have been presented, like the sneakers and so on, they're also trying to save the world in a different way, right? Exactly. Like they're not traveling anymore so much because now they don't have to, right? They can be yeah. together in this space without having to fly to the other side of the world every two weeks kind of and digital prototyping as well which is incredible right instead of having to actually make it you say oh we can design it first and then yeah it's just really really cool really amazing yeah well um i want to uh, invite lee to the conversation because he's probably going to have a lot of questions for you um and then after lee we'll jump into the into the questions that we have in the chat Hello. Hey, Lee. Well yeah, cool. Thanks for adding me. Um, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm very much aligned with a lot of what you've been saying. Um, I think there's an awful lot that can be done if we um, sort of start sharing these more positive narratives across this uh, uh, metaverse with a capital M. Um, and I think, like you mentioned Roblox, etc. cetera, like um, children don't, aren't going to question that there's value to be found in digital artifacts and digital things. Um, and if they can find value in those things, then they, you can um, tell stories through them as well. Um, I'm especially excited about the, the potential for the digital fashion as well, because we know that like fashion is a terribly wasteful industry. Um, being able to sort of um, replace the, the, the sort of like the flex and the clout of nice fashion with digital artifacts that replace something that has, has to be dyed, has to be made, and sometimes, regrettably, is only worn for Instagram anyway, um, is, is a nice, easy one that I feel like it's, we're going to see explode over the next few years as soon as the AR starts to infiltrate headsets and glasses. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the message that... Uh, you can really understand. I mean, VR has been been described as an empathy machine a lot, and some of my work um, over the last few years has been exploring VR as a as a tool for therapy as well. Anything that can sort of take you out of like where you are and take you into another place and convince your brain that you're there is going to have so much more impact in terms of education. Um, and actually, what we're seeing with things like Spotify uh, and and other sort of, uh, software that we a lot of us use day to day is this like disillusion of culture, like cultures just blurring into one, and, and that's you know could be interesting sometimes, and you can get interesting collaborations and all that sort of stuff. But um, again, I think the, the keeping culture alive is just something that we really, really need to be working on um, because uh, the, the, the lineage of people is just going di to disappear as this hyper-connected world just becomes more and more connected. So, yeah, I don't know if I've got any sort of questions as such. I'm just really interested, really aligned. And, uh, and yeah, I, just, I agree with a lot of the points that you've made. And it's nice to see that you're you know, working with the UN and getting such great figures and traction with, with young people. Um, and, uh, yeah, just want to see more of it, really. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I love what you said about um, digital fashion. Um, I think um, it's incredible watching uh, the kids kind of like look at things on uh, Fortnite and kind of like, they're really, oh, yeah, I really want this skin and stuff. And then you ask them, you know, what do you want to spend your uh, pocket money on and stuff? And they're like, no, I just want this other like skin and stuff. It's like you don't even want to go to like the uh, the the, uh, the toy shop anymore. Like, no, it's, it's quite incredible, really. Um, so, I mean, we can learn so much from them. And I think I think um, it's in, it's really, really interesting because kids are also learning these types of softwares already. And then, you know, they are now starting to be like, oh, but I can actually be a designer. Oh, I can actually, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can choose what my, you know, virtual avatar does. And, and then it's quite going to be quite interesting because you will then you, you already have seen communities form around certain pieces of clothing um, or certain. Or, or I've got that pet or I've got that thing, that thing, you know. So and then, mm -hmm. you know, you can imagine that that is really going to drive forward youth culture and then start to kind of actually really influence what actually gets made in real life and which is you know which is the kind of really crazy crossing over of the digital kind of craziness right of bringing the physical and the virtual worlds together and I think it's 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 such it's going to be such an incredible powerful tool for kind of tech trends and and and, and kind of trend setting I think. Um, I think um, growing up in the 80s and one of the, like the last generation to not have the internet yeah. um, and, and, and I think it's hard for a lot of people, I hopefully I'm not one of these people, but it's hard for a lot of people to realise that there is no real differentiation between digital and physical things and, and items for young, younger people. Um, and I think we've got a bit of a challenge because I'm sure that they're going to be like creating their own um, 
quite hard to penetrate cultures in things like Roblox and stuff like that. I know that there's uh, people doing research into new vernacular and new like slang and languages like cropping up and cultures forming around, well, around anything, around any kind of idea. And it's regardless of color, creed, location, borders, religion, any of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just around shared experiences in the metaverse. So it's both good and bad at the same time. But mm -hmm. if we don't, as adults and we don't just continue to pay attention to it and try to inspire people to use it for good then i think it can just spiral off into something that is, is untouchable and can't be you know can't be changed and yeah we know what social media does to people it was supposed to be the great connector and it's created silos and all sorts of nastiness and yeah so it's definitely something that we need to like really pay attention to i think and uh, people like you doing what you're doing that are absolutely essential to that Thank you. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, just to echo that, I think, um, you know, for a very, very long time, we've been teaching our children in a very particular way, which is teacher at the front. And, yeah, um, ridiculous, you know, really. And, 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 you know, you're going to listen to me. Um, and now can you get out your textbook? It's full of boring words. But anyway, <laughs> bear with me, yeah? There's, there's yeah, some pictures yeah. later on. Pictures later on, okay? Just wait, wait. I know these are in black and white. Don't <laughs> worry, keep with me, keep with yeah. me, right? It's all like, and, and but that would seem, to, that was apparently okay. And now you look at kind of, you know, statistics and kind of like, oh, you know, children, for example, in, I'm half English, half Singapore, point, right? So people in the UK and, and still people struggling to kind of like, you know, read and write. And there's like, oh, complaining. And saying, oh, well, maybe, maybe it's your methods, mate. <laughs> like, you know, think about how these new technologies could actually bring, um, you know, education to the heart of where the kid is maybe. And maybe, maybe it's hard for that kid to get to school. Have you thought yeah. about that? Or maybe they're bullied at school or maybe they might like a few you know, days where they can still have their lessons maybe brought to them through the use of these kind of amazing 3D worlds or 3D exactly. objects and characters you know, that, that can tell them stories. And I think if we are able to do that as a human race, why would we not do that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. until schools were invented, we were learning experiential, experientially uh, mm. through our day-to-day -day lives, right? And Indeed. that's what this can, this can offer. Again, you want to learn about the rainforest, then visit it. Put a headset right. on and visit it and see if you can find that rare bird or whatever. But uh, the school system is just it's, it's so leg it's so old, so legacy, it's so slow moving, slow changing. It's essentially like post-industrial revolution office maker machine. Um, and it's and obviously that does a disservice to lots of great teachers. But like broadly speaking, broad, broadly speaking, kids are going to learn more from the internet now. Anyway, they're going to spend just as much time or like on looking at screens outside of school than they are at school, being told what to do by teachers and crammed into rooms with kids that they might not necessarily want to hang out with all day. <laughs> right. Yeah. I want, I want to make sure that we get time to answer a few questions from the audience. Sure. So I'll read some. How can we artists get in touch with you for projects to align with your organization? I've been researching using digital tools in relation to gender performance. How, to, how can they get in touch with me? Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, find me on LinkedIn or, or message me um, at k at meshminds.com. Uh, I'm, I'm very easy to find, really. <laughs> Um, why did you start Mesh Minds? Blending technology and the planet together is the way forward. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's just a kind of combination of all the skills and experience and, and passions that I had to date, really. I'm 43 now, so I'm kind of like getting on a bit and stuff. And, you know, like, uh, you know, I've got to do something with my life. Um, so five years ago, I decided that I, you know, really needed to, to get out there and, and do something with all the knowledge that I'd acquired and all the amazing people I'd met along the way. And so, um, you know, I, I, as I said, I've always been really passionate about the arts. Um, and when I was the head of arts of the British Council, I realized that, um, you know, even in 2010, they were talking about, um, you know, how technology is changing the way that we are producing and consuming art. And that also technology is, fine, is allowing us to find new ways of connecting with and seeing each other through the arts. I'm like, you know, so that was my whole job to kind of do that. And then so then, but, but later when I kind of um, went back to, because of family circumstances, I had to leave that amazing dream job. And, and then I decided to become a technology lawyer. And I'd already been a lawyer before. Um, so I kind of like reignited, you know, recovering lawyer situation. Um, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go into technology law because I want to find out actually about, you know, what technology law, uh, sorry, technology companies are doing about investing in creativity and, you know, that kind of stuff. 
And um, it wasn't until the day that my um, my uh, boss at the time um, said to everyone, "You have to pick a technology out of a hat um, and uh, and and a, 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 an industry." And I picked out property technology, and I was like, "Oh God, I'm going to have to like you know research like real estate technology, and it's going to be really boring." And so when I was doing that, I was like looking out the window. I was like, "I wonder what's actually going on in like the art world." Um, and so I like, started really researching it, and be like, "Wow." And, and finding that there's so much going on, so many amazing tech companies really investing, like Autodesk at the time was doing this really crazy kind of like, you know, softwares and, and like cool, really like releasing cool videos and stuff. So I was like, yeah, you know, let's let's kind of dive into all this. And then, you know, back in uh, it's 2018 that we were connected first, Daniela, and like ages and ages ago. Right? Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just been kind of like a real ride since then, you know, so. I'm so, so pleased that you kind of reached out. Um, and, and yeah, so that basically art and tech for good um, came from also, you know, um, the, the kind of volunteering I'd done as well uh, along the way. And I just wanted to just, you know, have a safe and secure planet for all of us and all future generations. Um, I think nature is an amazing ins um, inspiration for art. Uh, I get an awful lot out of it. Um, and I think, uh, I think we, it's worth preserving. Um, so I think, you know, that's, that's kind of where it came from. Thank you. Awesome. There's one question that it's a bit kind of like controversial or like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe not controversial, but is there research done on how a VR, VR headset can affect a kid? Now Meta is forbidden kids to use their headsets. Yeah, so they've always had like a 13 and up, um, you know, uh, thing on it. And I, I, I really don't know if it's, uh, you know, I, I don't think there has been enough studies done on it uh, in terms of like how long term effects of like, you know, how it might kind of change the way that even our eyes uh, see things, you know, because it's kind of funny, right? I have, we, over the course of history, we've had certain kind of like changes, right, in kind of like our physiology as humans uh, to adapt to certain uh, new circumstances. And you never know, like, you know, our, our eyes might kind of be adapting to kind of like, you know, perhaps wearing more wearables or that kind of stuff in the future. I have no idea. But at the moment, where I come from, I don't foresee a time when we're all sitting in VR all day long right? It's going to be augmenting the real world. Like the internet, you don't spend all day on it, just glued to it, right? You do go to the toilet, eat, sleep, etc. You don't do other, interact with family, hopefully, you know, friends, etc. right? So, you know, it's a, you can turn it on and off. You mustn't forget that. So each to each their own. And we just must educate people about, well, that's maybe a bit too long for you, Maybe, bit, you know, I can spend a bit longer. You know, we're all different, right? So for children, you know, I think, of course, we have to protect them. And I think that at the moment, it's kind of like 13. It's, I don't know, fairly arbitrary because I guess, yeah, there hasn't been enough research done, hand on heart, right? I'm not a researcher. Um, but for me, I just think if, if they can see something that's kind of short, like even our experiences are like kind of you know, in three minutes when we had one that's one minute, right? One minute, you get put inside a virtual stomach. You can sh you shoot microplastics as fast as you can, right? And you have 60 seconds. Each time you wow. do it, it explodes and, sh and tells you, oh, that one was from a piece of clothing. That one was from a plastic bottle. And then, you know, so, and then you get like a score at the end and you can kind of challenge your friends, right? So in 60 seconds, we did a, a survey, right, that asked them, before you do this experience, how, rate yourself out of 10 how much you know about micro microplastics. And then after the experience as well. And people rated themselves five out of 10 for how much they knew before the experience and nine out of 10 for how much they knew about microplastics and where they came from and what to do about it. In 60 seconds, you can you know, take them away into that virtual world and communicate something just like that. And they, it stays with them, right? Because they've been they're so immersed, right? So if I can do that in 60 seconds, you know, what can be achieved, right? So I'm not asking people to, you know, nor our children, nor any adult to spend hours and hours and hours a day in a virtual reality headset if, if it's not for you. Do you have to kind of, you know, go? I love that answer yeah. because it's not even trying to defend like VR being used by children. It's just like, what's the time that you actually need to have the impact that you need to have? And that's it. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. So I'll read the last question because we're running out of time. The Institute for the Future predicts that the way of learning in the future is through emotionally uh, emotionally laden, gave me five immersive experiences. What is your opinion on this? Again, so if it's emotionally game, sorry. Emotionally laden. 
Well, I mean, I guess emotionally, like gamified, immersive experiences. That's what the future. What do I, what do I think? If I think that's the future. Yeah. 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 I, well, oh, I, um, if you think about it, storytelling is all about raising emotions in a way, right? So, mm. you know, of course, you know, when we, when we create these 3D worlds and we create these 3D characters, we're all about kind of trying to make it relatable. And so, you know, we, we all want to feel that human connection to each other in a way, right? Um, so I think, um, yeah, I, think, I, think, I think the cool thing is that this, this embodied way that we're able to kind of now experience the, the virtual world or the virtual realm and, and, and access digital information. Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, I just think it, it's incredibly powerful because it, it really transports you there and really makes you feel like you're there. And whilst you're there in that world, you can play with people's emotions. And I think that, you know, when I, you know, as I said, I, I'm, you know, older, so I don't come from the, the realm of now when you see that Matrix advert for the video game. And you're like, oh. and I was saying to my kids, you're growing up in a realm where you can actually step into the film that you just watched, right? And you can then go and stand next to Keanu Reeves and look at me <laughs> like, whoa. And it's incredible, right? So, you know, I think our ability to kind of like have people experience these, um, these worlds and, and feel more connected with each other is, is, is incredibly powerful. And I, I do think that every experience needs to have a perfect balance of that emotion in a way, right? Whether it's, you know, and, and there's many human emotions, right, that you can play with, um, even if it's you know scaring someone or making them laugh or you know so many many right so and that's I think that's that's going to be the power of this digital storytelling and being kind of but being able to see it from all angles and that's what really makes it you know and that that in and of itself to be able to teach someone how to create a story in 3D and make sure that the person that's inside that world is looking in the right direction and not like all the actions going on over there and they're looking over here you know so, and that is, that is, you know, part of the magic of, of being a VR storyteller, an XR storyteller in this way, right? Yeah. That's really hard, that is. I try yeah. to do that. Try, try to do like a, like a short 360 cin cinematic experience and you realise that um, it, immersion relies on people feeling like they have agency. But at the same time, if they're looking at the wrong character and they're missing something really important behind them, then you've lost them completely. Exactly. So you have to use like, you have to use stereo sound, for instance, have a sound on the right that to ask for it because people will instinctively you can control people's gaze quite easily as long as you think about it during that during the whole process you actually have to write the story around the fact that you need to be controlling the gaze of the of the user and um an immersion as well as what people are often aiming for and some of the most immersive things to happen are anything that is uh em emotive um some of the experiences i've had that have that stuck with me to this day for after years of experiencing vr stuff have all been like real experiences, like documentary experiences, and also experiences where you happen to be sharing a VR space with a friend or whatever. You could be a giant robot cartoon cat or something, but when they tell you something important, something that's, you know, sad or emotional, then you're still a human and you're, and you're sharing a moment together. And that moment stays with you as if you were, as if you were in reality. Um, so, yeah, it's very powerful. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it can be, become chaotic as well if you're not careful. Yeah. <laughs>